Welcome to the latest edition of Science or Nonsense. There was a recent article published on the very popular website called Real Simple. It was titled 25 High Protein Snacks That Are Satisfying and Tasty. There was a little bit of good in there and a ton of nonsense. So that's what we're going to explore in this uh, video. Here is the article in case you want to check it out. Either type in the title into Google or scan the QR code on the screen. So here's what, we do, what you can expect to cover. First of all, if we're going to talk about high protein, we should understand how much protein do you, do you really need? What is high protein? What is low protein? What's moderate protein? Then we're going to discuss what's actually good in this article, followed by the much longer section of what's actually nonsense in the article and why is it nonsense backed by scientific evidence. Before we jump in, who am I? My name is Igor. I am the author of 13 books on exercise and nutrition, including four Amazon bestsellers. As well, I've been a personal trainer since 2006 and teaching my methodology to other personal trainers by speaking at some of the world's largest personal training conferences. As well, I've done over 400 wellness presentations to some of Canada's largest corporations, including IBM, Bosch, American Express, University of Toronto, Investors Group, and others. If you want to learn when I publish more videos about exercise and nutrition, just click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So first, let's dive in. How much protein do you need? Here is a brief overview, and we're going to dive into this in much greater detail later in this presentation. Protein requirements depend on three factors. What is your activity level? Are you sedentary? Are you doing cardio only, strength training only, or cardio plus strength training? Uh, what's your body weight? And are you over 60 or are you under 60? Those are the three main factors that determine your protein requirements. If you want, pause this video right now so you can plug in the numbers and do it for yourself. Or if you don't feel like doing arithmetic, just go to this website um, and it, you can just plug in your, your details and it'll tell you exactly how much protein do you need based on, on your data. So here are examples, here are calculations for an average 50 year old person who weighs 154 pounds, which is 70 kilograms. So for somebody like this who is strength training or doing strength plus cardio, they need 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. They have 70 kilograms, therefore 70 kilos times 1.6 equals 112 grams of protein per day. So that's what a 154 pound person needs who is under 60 years old. Remember that number, 112 grams, because we're going to be comparing a bunch of things to that later on. And if you're wondering, what are the best protein sources? What are the easiest ways to get the requirements? Well, here is what I call grade A protein. Grade A protein is anything with more than 30 grams of protein per serving. Uh, here are some examples. Tuna, protein powder, shrimp, beef, and chicken. These are all examples of grade A protein. What about grade B protein? Grade B protein foods are anything with between 10 and 30 grams of protein per serving. So chickpeas, Greek yogurt, lentils, beans. Uh, chickpeas have approximately 14 to 16 grams, Greek yogurt 12 to 14 grams, lentils 16 to 18 grams, and beans, most beans are in the 12 to 14 gram per serving range per cup. And here are great C protein sources. These are the things that people often say are good protein sources, but they are not. Most cheeses, except for cottage cheese, have very low protein. They're about five or six grams per cube or per slice. One egg only has six grams of protein per medium egg. One glass of milk uh, is uh, about nine grams of protein. There's not a single vegetable out there with more than five grams of protein. And nuts and seeds uh, only have about five or six grams per, per serving, which is about 25 to 30 grams. So about... Uh, without an ounce. So none of these are great protein sources. They are They are protein sources, they're just not great protein sources. Um, and if you wanna find out about other foods that have protein or don't have protein, again, you can find all on this website, uh, which is on, on the screen right now and in the description below, so check that out. Now, let's talk about what's good in this article, the science. So there, there is one section of the article titled, Why Eat High Protein Snacks? It says eating a snack that includes protein can help create feelings of fullness, stabilize blood sugar, et cetera. And that is correct. Everything so far, so good. But it goes on to say, and deliver a steady supply of energy to the body and the brain. This is not correct. Why? Because protein is a very minor energy source. Fats and carbs are the major energy sources. So this part is more nonsense than it is science. Um, here's more. 
Um, many grab-and-go snacks are high in processed carbohydrates and sugar, leaving you feeling hungry and depleted rather than satisfied and energized. This is correct. I agree with this one. Here's the nonsense part. Tons of plants and plant-based foods contain plenty of, health, of hearty protein. This is absolute nonsense. Uh, to say that tons of plants and plant-based foods, that is not correct. About the only thing that isn't meat, fish, and seafood that contains lots of protein is tofu. And that's it. You can't say lots, depending on where your standard is. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Here's more science. If you're a meat eater, diversifying your protein sources by mixing in things like nuts, whole grains, seeds, beans, and even some, uh, some fruits and veggies provides you not only with protein, but with plant-specific nutrients um, like fiber, health fats, and anti-inflammatory compounds. Now, beef um, is uh, meat, fish, and seafood are great protein sources. But again, I want to say that the other things are not. This isn't exactly a debate of meat versus veggies. It's meat and veggies. Um, meat has protein, but no fiber. Veggies have fiber and very little protein. Don't use them as a protein source. They're great for you. They're great for many reasons. I sing their praises in my books on high blood pressure as well as type diabetes. But what they don't have is very much protein. Uh, let's continue on. The They also claim, here are the high protein snack food sources, both plant and animal based to keep uh, to keep in mind. Now, I'm not sure why they're listing basically every food under the sun, but here here's everything they list. And let's look at the protein content of all these different categories from the nutrient database of Health Canada. So they claim that lean meats are a rich source of protein, and that is true. Lean meats have between 35 and 60 grams of protein per serving. Um, so yeah, true, uh, that is worth protein source. Poultry, same thing, 35 and 60 grams. So yes, that is a rich protein source. Then they list eggs. As you know earlier, eggs only have six grams of protein per egg. Does that make it a good protein source? Nope. Why list it? I don't know. Um, dairy, milk, yogurt, cheese. So they locked in a bunch of things into one category, but milk is different than yogurt, which is different than cheese, which is different than cottage cheese, etc. But let's just go with milk. Uh, milk has nine grams of uh, protein per, per glass. Cheese is lower except for, for cottage cheese and yogurt, except for Greek yogurt, is also lower, about five or six grams. Greek yogurt is what, 14 grams. In any case, that doesn't make it a good source of protein. Seafood. Seafood is indeed a very good source of protein at uh, between 40 to 60 grams of protein. So yeah, that's a good source. Legumes, they list beans, peas, lentils. Um, they contain between four and 16 grams per, per serving, depending on, on, on what we're talking about. Beans um, are in the middle. Peas have uh, lower amounts, like four grams per serving, and lentils are on the higher end at 16 grams per serving. In either case, are they a great protein source? No. Are they an okay to good protein source? Yes. Um, nuts and nut butters. They are not a good source of protein because they only contain five to seven grams of protein per serving. Uh, so not a good protein source. Seeds and seed butters contain five to seven grams of protein per serving, so not a good protein source. And lastly, soy products. Again, they lumped in a bunch of things into one category, so I'm going to give you a range. They contain between seven and 27 grams of protein per serving. Tofu is very rich and tempeh, not so much. Um, so yeah, these are all the categories. And so again, if three of the uh, of the many categories they listed are high in protein, the others are not, why even list them in the first place? Because it's nonsense. Um, so how much protein per snack? Well, yeah, the author says, a helpful goal to aim uh, for is to make sure there's at least five grams of protein per snack. Now, five grams barely makes a dent. Think back to our 50-year-old person who, uh, who weighs 70 kilograms or 104 pounds. This person needs 112 grams of protein Per day. How much does five grams really contribute? Not a heck of a lot, but maybe they lowered the standard to meet their vegan oriented requirements. Um, here's some more nonsense in the article. A great protein boosting hack. Remember that even just swapping your usual white toast for a 100% whole wheat or whole grain toast, for example, will provide a few bonus grams of protein since non refined whole grains and grain products naturally include a bit more protein than refined white grains do. All true, but here's what I want you to notice. They don't list any numbers. They say a bit more protein. How much is a bit? Well, let's look it up. A slice of white bread, it contains 3.53 grams of protein. A slice of whole grain or whole wheat bread is 4.15 grams of protein. 
do you expect to get your protein requirements from by switching from white bread to whole grain bread? No. And that's why they didn't include the numbers because the numbers are not very impressive. It's less than a one gram difference in a slice of bread. So nonsense. Next. So how much protein do you need? We covered this earlier, but let's dive into this in more detail. According to this article, every individual's protein needs are different, dependent on factors like their lifestyle, activity levels, and sex. What they forgot to mention is their age, uh, their their weight. Uh, weight is a big one. So the author continues on. Um, generally speaking, a basic formula to figure out how much protein your body needs per day is to multiply your current weight in kilograms by 0 0.8. Now here is uh, where she continues on. Very active folks are recommended to, uh, to eat even more protein. So can multiply their weight in kilograms by one. Let's break this down. 0 0.8 is only true for sedentary individuals under the age of 60. And even then, that's just the minimum to prevent malnutrition. That's not the ideal, okay? That's just what's required to prevent losing muscle for people under 60 or sedentary. Um, here is a study that looks at protein requirements more closely. It's titled Reevaluation of the Protein Requirement in Young Men with the Indicator Amino Acid Oxidation Technique. Um, don't worry about what the TV is, but just <laughs> and know that this study is, is examining the protein requirements of young, healthy men. So it shows that an intake of 1.2 to 1.8 grams per kilogram per day is even more ideal for sedentary people. Okay. There's another study titled Effective Dietary Protein Content on Weight Gain, Energy Expenditure, and Body Composition During Overeating. So here's what the researchers did in this study. They recruited people and divided them into three different groups. One group ate just a little bit below government recommendations. So they ate 0 0.7 grams per kilogram per day. This was the low protein group. Group number two was the normal protein group. They ate what the, what's recommended in other studies, 1.8 grams per kilogram per day. And group number three was the high protein group. They ate a lot about what's recommended, 3.0 grams per kilogram per day. And here is what happened. Here were the results. So the group that ate below the RDA, below the recommended dietary allowance, uh, uh, gained 3.16 kilograms. Now, that's not all, all, all muscle, by the way. Uh, the moderate protein group gained 6.05 kilograms, and the high protein group gained 6.51 kilograms. In terms of fat mass, they all gained fat mass, but the low protein group gained more fat mass than the high protein group. Isn't that interesting? Now, fat-free mass, aka everything that isn't muscle mass, the low protein group actually lost 0 0.7 kilograms of lean mass, potentially muscle. And the moderate to high protein groups actually gained muscle without necessarily exercising. They just overate, okay? So not all of the weight they gained was body fat in the moderate and high protein groups, but all the weight gained in the low protein group was body fat. So... People who exercise also need more protein than people who don't exercise, and people over 60 need more than people who don't exercise. Here is the position statement of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Physically active people need between 1.4 to 2.0 grams per kilogram per day. And this is from a study titled um, Evidence-Based Recommendations for Optimal Dietary Protein Intake in Older, in older People. They say that um, was, uh, they say that older sedentary, I want to say sedentary seniors need between 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kilogram per day. So significantly higher than the bare minimum of 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is again, sedentary people under 60. Okay. And even then that's considered inadequate, but with, with seniors, that's even more inadequate. Now, if you want to dive deeper into this, and what are the nutritional requirements of older people? I have a special video on my channel um, titled Nutrition for Elderly Patients. So either click on the link on your screen right now or in the description below. Continuing on, the table of micro macronutrient content. Um, so after the entire article lists 25 high protein snacks and many of them are not actually high protein. So let's break this down. Let's just compare uh, their recommendations to what, what is actually a good protein source, which is a skinless chicken breast. So one serving of skinless chicken breast is 198 grams. So it has 44 grams of protein, zero grams of carbs, and 5.5 grams of fat for a total of 240 calories. That is, again, we're comparing everything to this. This is our, let's consider our gold standard. 
they also say roasted chickpeas are a good protein source. Well, is it really? Let's compare that to chicken. It contains 18.7 grams of protein, 58.6 grams of carbs, and 6.3 grams of fats for a total of 355 calories. Which one here is the real protein source? Chicken or roasted chickpeas? I'm not anti-roasted chickpeas. I highly recommend roasted chickpeas, but not because of their protein content. They're very good for fiber. Um, let's move on. Here are some more foods that they claim are high in protein, are high protein snacks. So a slice of bread with peanut butter. So it has seven grams of protein, 17.2 grams of carbs, and 9.4 grams of fats. Again, if it contains more carbs and fats than it does protein, does that make it a protein source or a carb source? And again, total calories of 175. They also recommend oatmeal with berries. Now, the way you prepare this is highly variable. Like what do you use, what do you use to make your oatmeal? Are you using water? Are you using almond milk? Are you using cow's milk, et cetera? So that's why the protein content varies here between seven and 17 grams per serving. It also contains 47 grams of carbs along with eight grams of fats for a total of 340 calories. And again, I ask you, if this food contains more carbs and fats than it does protein, is it considered a high protein snack or is it considered a high carb snack? Now, again, I'm not saying don't eat oatmeal and fruits. I highly recommend oatmeal and fruits, but not because of their protein content. Um, they also recommend pita with hummus. And that contains 7.8 grams of protein, 37.7 grams of carbs, and 8.1 grams of fats for a total of 255 calories. Continuing on, they also recommend mixed uh, uh, trail mix, basically. Um, four grams of protein in trail mix. I'm not sure why they've included that because it doesn't even, even meet their own standards of, have, of a snack with a minimum of five grams of protein. It also contains 14 grams of carbs, nine grams of fats for a total of 140 calories. Moving on, chia pudding. 4.3 grams of protein. Again, doesn't meet their own standard of, um, of five grams. 15 grams of carbs, 18.2 grams of fats, and a total of 235 calories. I'm not saying don't eat chia pudding. I'm saying it's, chia pudding is fantastic for you. It has a lot of fiber, but don't eat it for its protein content because it has next to nothing. They also recommend apples with peanut butter. I recommend apples. They're a fantastic food, but they're not a protein source. 8.4 grams of protein, 32 grams of carbs, and 16.3 grams of fats for a total of 283 calories. Just a few more. Stay tuned. Um, they also recommend a platter um, like this, which contains three grams of protein, 62 grams of carbs, and 16 grams of fats for a total of 430 calories. So not everything in this article is complete idiocy. <laughs> Uh, some of the things that they list truly are high protein sources. So I want to give credit where credit is due. They list a bunch of things that aren't really high protein snacks. Uh, they contain they contain protein, but these these authors change the question from yes from how much protein to a question that matters a lot less. Yes or no. This is not a binary thing. It's how much protein does it have? Ten grams, fifty grams, thirty grams is an in between thing. And yet they change the question to the wrong question. But there are some things that they listed that truly are high protein sources. For example, they recommend tuna or chicken salad on toast, crackers, or veggies. Now that's truly a high protein source. They recommend protein packed smoothies, true. Um, anchovies or tinned fish on toast, absolutely. Moving on, turkey, chicken, ham, or roast beef roll-ups, yes. Uh, smoked salmon toast, absolutely. Now again, the maybe about 60% to 70% of everything in this article is complete nonsense, but to give credit where credit is due, uh, 30 to 40% is pretty good, good content. There's been lots more misinformation around high protein. So I recorded another video on science or nonsense about high protein diets. If you want to dive into all the, well, in this case, mostly nonsense that they're talking about high protein diets, click on the link in the description below or on your screen right now.